Well, hello, humans, hippies, earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and hope you're lucky enough to be doing it too. I'm Bushcon Blitz, and this is Z Ferdinand. Uh, the BAMS Ferdinand, not the Franz Ferdinand, obviously uh, a fantastic historical figure and trigger point for World War One, as well as being a seminal British rock band. This is, in fact, the BAMS Ferdinand, the nasty piece of work that is the Tier 8 German tank destroyer. Now, once upon a time, the Ferdinand was one of the only Tier 8 TDs in the game, and it was quite a fierce vehicle. It did a whole lot of good for the green team and caused a lot of uh, angst and intimidation uh, for the Reds. But it really got outclassed and power creeped pretty hard by more mobile tanks, uh, both at Tier 7 and Tier 9, tanks with bigger armor profiles, tanks with bigger guns, until suddenly it was just a little bit of meh. Very, very slow, uh, very hard to move around the field. And what I've actually found in the course of this review, and I did this review because basically I wanted to uh, have a look at some of the tanks that have been changed. So I started driving this and I did tremendously well. Now, all they did with this tank, they, they gave it better armor, which is, you know, that's wonderful. They really did. They didn't touch the gun um, in terms of raw damage numbers and everything, but they gave it better armor. And they gave the gun itself better dispersion on the move and while traversing the gun around the, around the place. And that's really noticeable. I mean, it is really noticeable. If you've driven this tank a lot, you'd realize that you're going to see in the course of this video a lot of shots hitting that just maybe might not have hit or would have been very borderline previously. The other thing they did was they improved the terrain resistances. So there's three sets of terrain resistance in the game. There's soft, moderately soft, and hard, okay? Gold, silver, bronze, soft, medium, hard, whatever you want to call them, there's three different ones. And every map has those terrains modeled into it. So when you're driving around, it's either hard terrain, moderately soft terrain, soft terrain, one of those three. And that's a coefficient that goes into your traverse numbers and everything like that. So when you're driving around, if those terrain resistance numbers have been improved, then your tank will just traverse better, it will accelerate better, it will hold that speed better. And that gives you better mobility. And what I really love about this balance that has happened for the Ferdinand is that it hasn't been massive. It's not like they've given it an extra 10% damage per minute. They've made it more accurate. They've given it an extra 10 degrees of traverse raw. That They've given it, you know, 300 more horsepower and up to speed limit to 40 kilometers an hour. They haven't done any of that. They've just given it better numbers for dispersion on the move and while traversing the gun and improved the performance on soft and moderately soft ground. And they have, in fact, raised the armor profile significantly of the two big weak points either side of the drive wheels. If you look at the front of the tank, you can see either side there's an angled part that runs back towards uh, the tank itself. And they're now 200 millimeters up from 80 millimeters, which is good. But again, you're gonna take most of your damage through the cheeks of this tank, and you're gonna need to learn how to angle. Like you're gonna see how I am here at all times is angling the tank. And generally, this is one of the more passive games I played. Mostly in this tank, I played a very, very aggressive game. And, uh, and it was rewarded. The tank really, really can do it now. And that's, I'm going to show you some, um, some instances of me being just mobile with the tank and seeing how successful that is and why it's such a good thing. And this game didn't end up the way I wanted it to. But for all that, we did pretty bloody good. And it's just a testament to how good the tank is. I mean, it's really, really good. It's now probably one of my favorite tier 8 TDs and you know what the second TD that I really love at this tier is the Yak Panther 2 just because it's mobile and great gun but it I mean it's right up there for me with the Yak Panther 2 so anyway I ran it for uh 28 games on NA now 71% 2316 average damage pretty solid right I mean it's hard to not call that good um and I'll run you through the stats here at the bottom of the screen and you can see them but this is where the real improvement has come I mean, seriously, this is where the real improvement has come. And it's noticeable. It's, it's terrain resistance stats have increased to the point where you can just do enough traverse to keep people in front of you if you're canny and smart enough with your tank. And really, and you can see I angle up immediately to that T20, just constantly keeping it at an angle. He has to fire HE, 
He does 40 damage or 39. I mean, it's not really neither here nor there. And look at those shots. They're all with the gun traversing and the tracks moving. I mean, this is really why the tank now works. And I'm angling and angling and angling. And it's so good now for dominating lower tier uh, mediums and lights who try and push on you. You can see uh, I'm with Nick from Premo here. Uh, that's an on the move shot again. Like, very, very solid. And we ran this tag team for ages, which was an RU251 and me running around in the Ferdinand. And uh, I think we ran it for about 20 games. And I actually had a higher win rate, but lower average damage. And then I ran it for another eight games solo and probably won about 60% of them and but got to do lots of damage because <laughs> he didn't take any of my damage, which was lovely. Uh, <laughs> because I'm a selfish human. You're going to see here again, this is a great instance of how I've pushed up into the left-hand side here with a medium against a whole bunch of lights and there's a TD, he's gone around the corner, we start pulling back, we immediately angle. Now that angle, you're going to see me do this a lot. What it does is it makes the cheeks of your turret exceptionally strong. Look how good it is now at peaking and dumping damage. It's really, really solid. It hits great. I mean, you can see every time, really quick, very, very nice damage. I'm backing right up. There's a 59 there that I'm a little worried about. I'm going to just nut this guy quickly. Always moving, always pumping. I can see there's a 59 there, so I'm going to push around very quickly. Now, this is where I like it. It seems to just accelerate better. Um, we're getting up so much quick. Oh, look, it's not sluggish. It used to be so sluggish. We have, we're here in ample time to set the shot up. Bang. And then I'm going to keep... You've seen both with the French light that pushed on me, the 1375 in the last game, and this Type 59. I make sure that I've got something solid right next to me. I know the 59 doesn't have amazing DPM. Uh, it's solid. It's about 2100, 2200, maxed out. Uh, and he just can't get around me and can't get there quick enough. Obviously, Martin's brother. <coughs> Everyone going to host him a winner. Everyone goes home a winner. You can see Nick's going to get uh, belted there by that purging. Straight through the wall with AP. And the gun is gorgeous. The gun is absolutely gorgeous. Let me run you through a few things that I like about this gun. It is a tier 10 gun. It's a 12.8 centimeter, 128 millimeter Pac 44 L55. I mean, look, I'm firing on the move. I'm able to be aggressive and push in this thing angle up and still move and shake and bake and I really really like that about the tank it's it's a 122 millimeter so your average alpha is 460 just like the Yag Panther 2 your average pen is 246 millimeters of AP pen and 300 and this is a lovely part about it 311 millimeters of APCR pen you don't have heat so you don't need um, calibrated shells, you don't get a lot out of it anyway with AP and APCR compared to when you've got heat. But for all that, your APCR doesn't eat spaced armor, doesn't get stopped by spaced armor, it goes just fine. Again, pumping in, 23, we angle up to this guy, it's not going to help because he's a T-34 and he has an awful lot of penetration. Now the mobility isn't bad, but it's not quite quick enough to get around the corner there in time because I'm an idiot and I go and turn shallow. A Yag pushes up into him, and now I'm just gonna reverse out. Now we've got two minutes 10 left, got plenty of time, no need to worry, just gonna load up the HE and look for a simple HE shot anywhere on the tank will do. Oh, he moves past that one, we'll just hit him on the back deck before he gets around. Over angled, not bad, heed the Lorax, solid effort, mate. Um, you nearly pulled that one out for the team and your team was looking pretty much tough and done by then. So that's, that's all pretty solid damage. Again, I mean, it's not the same old Ferdinand. It's not your granddad's Ferdinand. It really isn't. It's, it's such a different tank. And it's such a subtle change. I really am impressed that the guys can get balance this right on this tank. They've taken it for me from a tank that was kind of not doing a whole lot to a tank that is now really, really valid and useful in the current meta. And I've got to say, playing tier eight and tier seven is so much more fun right now than playing tier 10. It, it's just not even close. It is so much more enjoyable to play this meta where people are moving, heavies are pushing, um, everyone's active, there's a lot going on. And yet, it, 
it just kills the tier 10 matter and the Ferdinand is built for this kind of stuff and you can see I'm backing up again to make sure that I don't have anyone behind me now your rate of fire 6.32 rounds a minute so you've got you've got better uh, rate of fire than all these heavy tanks that are going to be coming up on you so you should be pretty okay backing up again you see we getting a good angle and we ate that shot right into that 200 millimeters of buffed armor on the corner which is just awesome like that is exactly what you want to be doing i am running uh, vertical stabilizer with this now that is an absolute must have if you are driving this tank you must be running the vertical stabilizer it is so handy and it allows you to have this aggressive push 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 feel about the vehicle um, it is not impenetrable don't get me wrong you see me get a lot of bounces i'm also getting a lot of hits i just used all my hit point pool there so the alpha is great the dispersion 0.321 is not amazing but it does it's good enough for this kind of work where you're just angled up and you're aimed in i mean look at the size of the aiming circle 321's fine it's fine 0.321 in that kind of an aiming circle is absolutely jim dandy and your aim time of 3.8 seconds when you've got all the bells and whistles on and you're running one set of rations is also excellent um, I mean, it is so improved. It is so much improved. I love having this tank in the garage now. And I never used to drive it on purpose because, like, it was fair enough. You could camp at the back. You could push a little bit. But if you got pushed on, you just your traverse was just that little bit too low to actually get anything done. And it doesn't feel like that now. The mobility is enough for you to get out and follow. You're not going to be at the front of the medium pack or the fast heavies but you'll be just dragging along behind, which is exactly where you want to be. And you can see what I'm doing is keeping that open. I do this sometimes, but people don't usually come back out where you just use the look around bar while keeping the gun sighted on the edge. And then when they come out, you just tap the button and they die. It's really, really good. Um, and you're going to see in this game, there is actually a Ferdinand that flanks. I mean, look at that shot. Look at that shot in the Lerva. And there is our flanking Ferdinand, our good mate, uh, he's at the back, he's flanked around the grub, and you're going to see the armor profile here. With AP, if you're unangled, no problems, you're getting damaged. It's just all there is to it. And uh, I'm going to use this to try and side scrape off. I'm actually too low. So if he hits me now with an average alpha roll, he's going to be able to get me. I use that look around bar again, uh, and I know that there is someone at the back. There's a T-54 back there, I think, keeping their TD at bay. Get a nice angled up bounce. He's not angled up. He's got two targets to worry about. Our T28 saves my bacon here. At least he makes it so that it's an easy kill for me now. He lows low rolls. We get the job done. Bang, 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 bang. Turn around uh, and move back and help the team. He flanked in the Ferdinand. <laughs> I love that. Now, this is hard terrain for the most part. So you're not getting the full benefit that you get on the soft and the moderate terrain. But hard terrain was never the problem with this tank. Most tanks don't struggle on hard terrain because hard terrain is very, very easy to get your absolute 100% true traverse number. What you don't get on that is a feel for how badly it performs on soft and really soft terrain. And, or moderately soft and soft, however you want to call it. Um, watch this shot. Yep. The gun is just fine, hey. Running it with vertical stabilizer is a huge positive. Uh, it really does help things. We've got no shots here on. We don't have any more hit points to burn. We've done plenty of damage. We've really helped the team out. Um, we're just gonna basically let this Yag Tiger come around the corner, put one into him, and if he gets one at us, that's all well and good. But at least we've done our best for the team. There you go. Now your sides are incredibly thin. Your side armor is, well, in game it'll tell you your side is 80 millimeters. There's various parts to your sides and they're angled at different levels. So, but trust me, you know, if you over angle this too much, you will be punished for it as well. You should, it shouldn't have too strong an armor profile. It'll, it'll get absolutely belted. Again, we started in the one, two, three spawn. You can see in the South side of the map and I've pushed with the team. It's a tier nine game and I've able to take this very, very lovely gun this tier 10 gun, and I've been able to put it into a fantastic position to be successful. Really quick hit, bang, 622. Straighten that Lekeps M41 and 90 millimeters. 
I know that's not how you pronounce it, but anyway. And then we push, 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 straight around, bang, thank you. Look at that lag. Like, this is what I have to deal with on the NA server. And think it's worse on Asia right now. I mean, the lag is just ridiculous for me right now. But still, even with that lag, this is a great tank to play because it's not particularly reliant on, you know, fine, detailed play. It doesn't have to be the medium stuff that's trying to take snapshots, pulling out from behind corners and, uh, and flying around and CODing people. It's able to set up and it's quick enough to move fast and still set up. And we angle up quick to that guy, we get just back around and that's what I love about it. Like, it's, it's quick enough to do this. And look at the gun, the gun just works. So I wholeheartedly approve of the brand new BAMS Ferdinand. Um, I'm a big fan of it. I wanna get around there, but I don't wanna block that Leo if he wants to pull back from that defender. So I give him a bit of space, give him some C room. And then I'm gonna push pretty hard on this defender here. I've got um, Nick on the right hand side again. Uh, he's in the RU, lovely, lovely, lovely. Very good player. And I will wholeheartedly agree with you if you say, well, you were playing with a really good player. That's why you have such a good win rate. Like that's absolutely true. I wouldn't have won nearly as many games. Um, if I hadn't been playing with Nick. So I'm not pretending, uh, but I certainly would have won pretty close to bloody 70%, and I would have had a lot better average damage than 2310, because this guy keeps taking my, mon my, no my, mon my, my, my money, <laughs> my numbers, he keeps taking my numbers. Um, mod one, no problem, AP straight through the front. And again, I've pushed, I'm pushing. This is how you play TDs. This is why I love Tier 8. Tier 8 features so many different kinds of gameplay and so many different kinds of tanks, but there's... TDs are your DPM Kings. That's exactly what you get at Tier 8. TDs are your DPM Kings and are best served pushing the line where they can get lots and lots of shots out, okay? That's what a TD is at Tier 8. That is not how a TD is played at Tier 10. At Tier 10, TDs are played from the spawn, as you saw on that first map where I was... Uh, running from the spawn on and sure that's valid like it's valid in certain in certain maps <clears throat> but to be able to play a TD like this where you can bring this kind of gun and this kind of DPM to bear really really succinctly and, and, and precisely on a map against this many heavies and know your angles and work the map and and do well with I mean you can see I've pushed up around here I've got Nick behind me dead hull down on the hill these poor old T-34s are in a horrible position I can see them pushing around here I'm gonna go and side scrape off this angle again just setting up, waiting for it. And the guys from Chrono, they did the right thing. They pushed up, but they just didn't get support. And their team didn't hold that flank. Like, Port Bay is all about that part where Nick is now. Without that area there, you can't function correctly on this area here. And these T-34s and this uh, T-54E1 got stuck trying to hold this area here with shots coming in from two sides. And it's just, I mean, it's problematic. And that's one of the reasons why people get triggered on this map me particularly when you have two or three mediums and they simply don't go to that area out there on the flank like that is the must-have rock that rules the map like a aka the uh oh look at this so this is what i love about it the most when you get tier 7 tanks in tier 7 games you can be very aggressive and you can really hurt them but you can see here i push up really aggressively because nick was stuck in a terrible position and needed a hand I have no idea where that went. Looks like that one went right through. 240 odd millimeters of pen. That's a T49. Looks like it went right through and did no damage. <laughs> I don't know what that, that even does. Um, just for reference too, this is the same pen the Death Star has on its high explosive round that does 1300 average alpha, 246 millimeters. Makes you think, doesn't it? Uh, anyway, I digress. Um, so the traverse now, your raw traverse numbers, nearly 40 degrees once you've got everything loaded up. That's another one. You can see you eat up so much damage when you do this. Now, I know that IS has the stock gun, and I incorrectly think that I can ignore him. And I eat a lot of damage from that IS player. I, player underscore 189231 or whatever his name is. I mistakenly think that he is going to be a pushover so I can ignore him. And he, can't, he starts pinging me. I'm like, you grub. You absolute grub with your little stock IS gun. How dare you? And <laughs> he does it again, I think. Well done him. Like, uh, more for me for giving him an even break. But he pushes up. Kudos to him. Like, absolutely pushes up me. He sees me at 257. Thinks I'm going to be uh, something he can clear off the map. 
and you can see I'm using that bush there. By putting that bush in front of me as well, it stops it stops anyone from really getting a good look at your weak point weak points. If you can pull back far enough so that you're a bit of a silhouette, it stops the weak points from popping, and that means that you're uh, able to get bounces easier. And you can see the reload speed on the, the tank is excellent. I mean, you're, you're throwing out a shell every nine and a half seconds. Uh, now, I do run rammer on this. There's nothing extra special in this loadout. I run the rammer, I run the enhanced gun lane drive. You can run vertical stabilizer on a TD now. It's one of the reasons why people who pretend that some TDs that shall remain nameless are too hard to fire and they have bad aim time and all this and crappy gun handling and dispersion. Vertical stabilizer will pretty much fix any problems you have. Um, vertical stabilizer is where it's at. Like aim time is so much more important than dispersion. Uh, if you can get your aim time down, you dispersion on a shot around 100 meters, unless it's a horrible gun like an SU-152 or a KV-2 or something like that, the aim time will make up, like look at this, I'm pulling back. Look at the aim time on dispersion. Look at the dispersion rather on movement with this tank now. And I pull back because I think that 34 is gonna push up and lo and behold he does. And now Nick has put himself in a perfect spot. Now we weren't on voice comms for this, but he knows what he's doing and absolutely put himself in the mayor's office there with that one. I knew I couldn't take a shot, so if the T-34 pushed up on me, I would leave myself open to possible death and loss, which would be very upsetting for everyone concerned. So I just pulled back to the point where he could not shoot me at all and I could still spot him. And then we just pump him and pull back again. He's still focused on Nick because he knows he can clear Nick. Uh, just in a bit of a tough place, Michael. Bad luck, mate. Um, but otherwise, pretty good mate. Pretty good game all round. And that's the Ferdinand. I love it. I think it's a great tank and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised if you haven't driven it for a long time and you're interested in getting stuck back into the TDs at tier eight. Lovely tank. Thanks for watching. Uh, stick around. There's lots of streams. There's lots of events going on. There's lots of things happening. But until next time, please look after yourselves, be nice to each other, and stay safe on the battlefield. Oh, and if this comes out while I'm away, um, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. See you, team.